I know. Oh, my bad. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to his and her perspective. perspective. And here at His and Her Perspective, we find common ground to harmonize relationships. And we do it by doing things like we're going to do today. We're going to talk to you about an amazing topic. What? Oh, Lord. Hold on. Uh oh, we missing something? We are. Because I, I think if I do that, then you're going to see that. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> that's okay. Cause guess what? There it is. Has the game of love changed? Right. We We're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about the different things that have changed in the game of love. But before we do that, brother, how are you doing? I'm solid. I'm solid. Uh, you you look nice. How are you doing? Well, thank you very much. You as well. I am absolutely wonderful. I got my coffee, so I am going to be awake probably like halfway through the show. So don't nobody judge me if I go sleep, right? Oh, you will be judged. <laughs> <laughs> haters. Yeah. Haters. Listen, today we're going to have a great time. If you are looking at us right now, make sure that you are saying something, right? Subscribing to our channels and you are sharing because why? Sharing is always caring. You know, you may not be able to do a watch party, but that doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and click the share button, put it in some of your groups that you're in, put it on your page, go ahead and invite some of your friends, tag them, do something, but make sure that you're sharing why? Because we need to get as many people onto this broadcast as we can. Go ahead, make sure that you are liking all of our pages, the Von, La von Love Alchemist on all social media platforms, Coach Michelle Monet on the same, as well as ATR, All Things Relevant. Make sure that you are uh, highlighting and liking and following all of those pages. Yes, so that you can make sure that you're getting all the juicy information that all of these platforms are putting together just for you. So who is joining us today? We want to know who you are. Hey, Yarly, we got Yarly over there on uh, at the bakery, Yarly in Brunswick, Georgia. Yarly's always in the place. What's good, brother? Yarly, good to see you, man. Always in the place. Thank you so much, Charlie. I appreciate you. So we got some other people that's watching us incognito, but that's okay. If you don't want to say something, we would love to say hi to you. But if you just want to just chill for a moment, we understand for those who may not be used to us. So listen, we're just going to get right into it, right? We, uh, we want to, hey, listen, one thing I wanted to say, if you are a couple or if you know a couple that has been married and they have been enduring all of the societal things and they are doing it, I don't care if they've been married two years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. If they are married and you think that they should be highlighted because they are an amazing couple, make sure that you are calling us or emailing us. You can call us at 304 60 ask us. That's 304 60 ask us. Or you can email us at harmony at his and her perspective.com to uh, go ahead and send a picture of the couple that you think should be highlighted and some interesting information about them so that we can share it. Now I'm telling y'all, y'all gonna want to do this when we when we sitting in front of 200,000 people, and I said 200,000. Yep, I showed sure it. It's a real number. <laughs> it's a real number. Y'all gonna want to be highlighted. So don't be, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't despise our small beginnings. So just make sure that you, you know, help us out. Go ahead and do that. So who else is over here? We got uh, Robert Lee is in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Ayana from over at Maryland. Um, yeah, Robert always coming in with his comments. He ain't telling us who he is and where he at. We gonna come back to your comment though, Robert. We always love you all coming in. So we thank you so much. So listen, brother, 
This is a really good comment. Did y'all see our picture that we posted on there? What do you all think of the photo that we posted as a, um, a promo for this show? Can you flip it and show them? Yeah, let me see if I can bring it up. There's Monique Sinclair. She says, hello from Canada. I uh, got my, my lovely mother is watching with us. I can't highlight her comment. Oh, she didn't comment. She's just showing up. Uh, the brother says he's from Memphis, Tennessee. You already you already highlighted Ayana, right? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so hold on because I'm going to have to pull it up on Canva. Give me one second. Just keep on talking to the people because we, we want to show this because we're, we're live already, so it's not showing the photo anymore. Okay. No worries. I'm, I'm sure they saw it on the promo. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but we want them to talk about it for those who didn't, who just, you know, clicked in because they was being nosy and they just going to see us and they're going to love us. All right. So we just want them to be a part of the entire situation. It's an experience at the His and Her Perspective show. If you all have not been watching our shows, shame on you. That's the first thing. Second thing is you need to. And you have been missing out on some amazing conversations. Anybody in our in our in our feed in our our family that has known y'all, tell them. Tell them what they've been missing. Talk to them. Yeah, we, we put it know. down every week. We put it down every single week. We drop some major bombs. We show sure do. We be doing it. So, we just be missing Facebook jail. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I put up a a post uh, yesterday. And I was asked a question about that post. So I'm going to answer that question. Uh, once okay. We in here in a minute. Or once okay, here we go on this photo. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming. It's almost there. Okay, it's slow. Go ahead. Tell them about it. Tell them. Okay, here we go. You still on here dial over there? 56 yeah, right. I know, man. I don't know. AOL keep creeping up in my crib. <laughs> AOL, you know, the whole thing. It's just not right. Okay, so here we go. What y'all think about this? Mm. Tell us. On bended knee. Share, share, share. Share what you think. You think it's a great thing. You think it's a bad thing. You you know some people. What you know? What you got? What you got? What has been lost in the game? Love is mutual cooperation was replaced. I should have posted that. Okay, absolutely ridiculous, you say. Then we got some people who say, Yarley says, what has been lost? Did you post that already? No. Okay, what has been lost in the game of love is mutual cooperation was replaced by mutually ass assured destruction of the relationship. Hmm. So I want to go back to, because we I didn't want to forget Robert up here. Robert said, the gender war has replaced love. Let me remove this because it's going to keep coming up. Remove all things. Well, I'm gonna have to get back with them in a little later. Uh, gender war has replaced was replaced uh, has replaced love competing against each other for win <laughs> for each other. I forgot. Forward has replaced love. I'm not sure he's be he talks text, so I'm not sure what you meant. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else we got for the win. I think that was against so. each other for the win has replaced love. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Yarley says boo out of pocket mm -hmm. Ayana says that's BS and then this photo is for likes to go viral we know that the man gives access to a woman to be a wife a woman cannot make a husband now that's not true now Robert I, I know somebody I know, somebody, know somebody that, what? Me that has that that did this yeah I, you know I, I think it's becoming it has become more common mm -hmm. um, for women to propose. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask y'all this, family. Um, does anybody know what the origin is of getting down on bended knee? What is the origin of that gesture? Because there is one. There has to be an origin of that behavior, of mm -hmm. that gesture. I just want to know if anybody is familiar with what that is. I looked around and, and I found a few theories and I came, I kind of came up with one of my own. Um, but I want to know what y'all think. Is anybody familiar with that, with what that gesture means? Yardley is our walking encyclopedia. I know. I can't believe he didn't say something like, uh, unless he's typing, maybe he's typing something long. 
<laughs> he said, men are the gatekeepers of marriage. Typically they are. And let's, okay, so let's talk about why we're waiting for them to answer. So let's talk about where the tradition, there's a history to marriage. And a lot of times, you know, we always talk about on here, when you don't know the purpose of a thing, abuse of that thing is inevitable, right? So there's a history to marriage and marriage was typically uh, uh, a contract. It was in order to bring, it was, it was order to bring communities together to maximize the financial benefits. And so what has happened is, and this even goes into the women proposing because they want to be a part of the romance. They want the romance. And so romance has really wrecked marriage in the, in the sense that it's, it's always about the romantic part of it. How can I make this romantic or how can I get more likes or how can I get people to do something that's going to get ahs and oohs and all of these things. And so when we get away from what the, the whole point of back in the ancient times, them bringing two communities together to solidify their financial stability, then we we move into the romance of it. And, oh, you got to be on bended knee. And, oh, you got to make a big old thing. Oh, you got to do all these different things. You got to get a horse and carriage or you got to make sure that we have a party and everybody has to be around. But what do you think about the... Um, the the system is called the system is called uh i'm sorry oh no 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 i take that back let me go back what do you think about the community marriage being a communal contract a communal con explain that a little bit further meaning that if okay for instance if i'm a paper maker right and your family owns paper i mean if i'm a tree tree uh i I have a, a bunch of trees and your family owns is a is a paper maker. Us coming together would would make more money in our in our families. That makes sense. So we would make sure that our children were coming together. You know, don't matter what they we going to put them together. We're going to arrange this marriage to make sure that our lineage continues in the financial stability. Yeah, I, you know, I, that again, that was the original intent behind marriage was it was as much a financial arrangement as anything right maximize uh resources and things of that nature and, and to the point that you made it's recently become a romantic thing yeah. and and you can see now of course that the, the that the divorce rate has skyrocketed and and family structure has fallen by the wayside so now pleasure is our god right yeah you just do whatever feels good marry whoever you want if you're in like one week and then you divorce the next year you know people are just doing whatever they want to do and uh the, the again the original intent has been watered down yeah it really has and so robert says uh yarley says it comes from the middle ages i believe and then robert says when a man gets on one knee before his woman he is showing or stating his service his protection and honor to that woman that's what yeah. I found when I was looking I found that too. I, you know, I, I wanted to just kind of expound on that just a little bit because um, to the point of the, the Middle Ages and then the the gesture of, of getting down on one knee and stating service, protection and honor. And it's still common now to bow before a king and even a queen. But I think when you think in terms of what men were asking women to do. Right. Because we're, we're trying to secure legacy here. Right. And, and there are few things more important than the, the carrying of a child and, uh, and ensuring a healthy birth and then nurturing that child up to a proper age where it can become self-sufficient. Like that is a huge undertaking, particularly if there are multiple children involved. And right. so what you're asking of a woman in the instance that you get down on one knee and ask her to marry you, to be your wife, you're asking a huge service of this woman. And so if anything in my mind uh, deserves a, a gesture of gratitude, of honor, of respect, uh, I, I can't think humility. of humility. Yeah. because But see now, of course, it's just, baby mama, baby daddy, and all of that right. stuff has kind of been lost because right. nobody talks about legacy anymore. We're just right. talking about, you know, 
we don't we don't plan for generations anymore. We just plan from one payday to the next. Right. Pretty but, much. But the initial idea behind what a man was asking of a woman in that instance, I, I think it was I don't know. I kind of think it was probably worthy of that type of gesture. What, what y'all think about that family? I, I I totally agree with you because when you think of it, so if, if people, instead of saying, will you marry me? They said, will you create my legacy? Will you help me in creating my legacy for generations to come? And watch people this. Look, take... Go ahead. Look, we used to, now when we were, when we were children, we used to say, uh, when we go up to a girl, we used to say, would you go with me? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, another term that's been watered down. We just took that to mean, will you be my girlfriend? But will you go with me means that I'm on a purposeful journey and yeah. I want you to come with me. I got a lot for you to do while we're on this yeah. journey. Having babies is one of them. Being my support system is another one. Keeping that battery in my back. Like, will you go with me is a huge undertaking. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and I, I think it falls right in line with, but again, you know, everything's been watered down now. It think? really has. Even even how, let's go even, let's go into some more history, right? They talk about in the in the, in the uh, ancient times the honeymoon that we want to go on and be together alone. I'm gonna spend time with my man or my woman for a whole week on the islands. We sipping sipping all the you know whatever we sipping on, right? Was generally to bring the families together and they travel together for the entire family to bond. And it was called a bridal tour. Wow. It wasn't called a honeymoon. Wow. You know, so all of these different traditions are changing out of the romance of this R and B and 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 you know, I can't will you will you be my what's I don't even know I, I don't I listen to sleep, I can't breathe without you. I ain't bathed, I ain't shaved. It's all it's all, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> And it just sucked out the purpose of what the whole thing was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so we really, and I said this, I've had, oh, I had this, I had, I was in the real, in, well, I won't say the, the group, but I was in one of the older, in the adult groups and they were talking about it. And I had uh, one lady said that is, is marriage a contract? And I said, absolutely. This is what it's, oh, and when I tell you, I think about, I had about 200 comments under my comment going off on me, and if people did that, and then you know what, and you don't know, none of I mean, it was going in. I didn't care because I still stand and say that marriage is a contract. And if you stop, if you treated your marriage the same way you did your business and your career, people wouldn't walk away as easy as they do. Yeah, and here we, we y'all know my story. And if y'all don't get my book, Rejection Save My Life, and you'll know my story because you, I'm talking from a person that knows exactly that. And I'm still saying that had I treated my marriages or marriage like it was my business, because I'm if anybody know me, y'all know, see what I be on on Facebook. I'm relentless. OK, so I would have been relentless. And most people don't do that. We put more energy, more time, more resources into our careers, into our businesses, going after the coin, going after the bag. Then we do the re relationship. And, and Coach Vaughn always talks about it. 80 to 95 percent of your your entire life is really how it functioning it is is really based on your intimate relationship yeah. he always says that you know um you know i don't like to get too religious but I, i'm gonna I'm go to the bible here for a minute come on now and it says when a man finds a wife he finds a good thing come right? on now there's some implications in that statement one she's not your wife when you marry her, she's a wife. When you find her, that means she's that already. Is. That means she's already walking in the spirit of what it means to be a wife. She's already wife material, right? Now, the reason that it specifies that when you find a wife, it's a good thing. It's because it's not common, right? Most women simply do not qualify, and, and I'm going to add to that and, and and go a step further and say I bet. I say that the average man doesn't qualify to be a husband. The average man, the average man is just, you know, going with the flow, right? The average man, society says go. The average man is going with the flow. But guess what? Even a dead fish can go with the flow, right? 
So it's something special about finding a wife. And just because you marry a woman doesn't make her a wife. Just mean you marry somebody. Yep. But because I, I always say this is the thing. If she's not helping you meet your purpose. Y'all just roommates and having sex. And that's really what we what a lot of that's what marriage has in, in, a, in a lot of ways devolved to just really finding somebody that you like a whole lot. And, you know, the song says, I can't live without you. I can't breathe without you. And so let's get married. Yeah. <laughs> and see, the thing is, people don't understand, too, what that favor. Let me let me talk about the two sides of the good thing and the favor. First of all, every woman is not a good thing and she doesn't know who she is. She can't be your good thing. So when that good thing comes into place and then you unlock that key with the favor in it, because when that favor unlocks, you go from a good man to a great man. You go from your from 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 doing something to purpose. You go from creating to magnifying. And that's exactly what people don't understand is that it takes those two things. People say, well, I don't need to have, um, I don't need to, uh, I'm trying to think of the term, something about they don't need, they don't need a relationship with the higher power, whatever you call them, God, Allah, Buddha, whatever you call them, there's still one, right? He is the one who created the institution of this. And because he created the institution, if you can't, it's like going to Volkswagen and asking for a Volkswagen piece and you've never been certified to put the Volkswagen piece in. Hmm. So what are you going to be doing with the Volkswagen piece? You're just going to be sitting there looking at it because you're not going to know what to do. You might go in, you might try to put it on, right? You try to put it on, you try to work at it. You got this oil coming all out. It's, it's a mess. And that's typically what's happening in these marriages that are not being led by who they who they were made and created by. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about being this religious person because I am not religious. I'm a spiritual being that 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 has a heavenly father that I, I don't even like religion. I don't even I, I don't. It it irks me. Right. So anything religious, I, I cringe. But you have to have a personal relationship and you have to know how to handle that marriage in order for it to work. So, so let me jump to this post that I uh, that I made a day or two ago. I think it was just yesterday. And so I, I made this post and I said, a lot of us finally settled down for a serious relationship at 30 plus years old. That's a losing strategy for a woman who wants a husband and children for purposeful men and for and for a people who want better. Normalize urgency towards winning is what I'm saying. Right. Mm. And so mm. the question was asked, explain why this is a losing strategy. Okay. Why okay. is the losing strategy to wait? And one of the reasons that I say it's a losing strategy to wait. Look, first of all, one of the primary reasons that a man is attracted to a woman is physical beauty. Right. I mean, let's keep it a buck. We're not. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and so she's at the height of her physical beauty, typically somewhere around between the ages of 21, 25 or so. Some will go right around there. Once a woman hits, you know, 30, um, it begins the the decline for a couple of different reasons. Right. Not just the physical beauty, because women are still beautiful as far as physically appealing well beyond 30. But her fertility is beginning to, to decline. And so she's entering, she's beginning to go toward that high risk pregnancy stage. Right. So let's just say, for instance, you decide as a woman that at 30, OK, now I've had my fun. I've had all my hot girl summers. I got my degrees and, and now I want to settle down. Well, by the time you settle down, find a guy, get married, you're probably looking at at least a year maybe a little bit longer. So you're, you're, you're giving birth at what, 32 maybe. And so now you're, how many children do you want? If you're just now starting at 32, yeah. by the time you hit 35, you're entering high risk pregnancy. Right. You really don't. And then where's the recovery period to give your body a break between children. You really don't allot yourself very much time to be fruitful and multiply. Right. 
right? Right. Not only that, I, I say for men too, look, so many of, of the brothers that I talk to that have done all of the chasing that they want to do, got all the money that they want to make, and even women, the older we get, the more rigid we become. Yeah. Less flexible. Yeah. Yes. The more set in our ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's not as easy to grow together with someone because you already grown really for all intents and purposes. So uh, I look back and my wife and I got married when I was 18, right out of high school. There was a lot of learning and a lot of immaturity on my part and all that good stuff. But we were still so young and learning the game of life together. So you know, by the time we reached 30, man, we already had 12 years in the game. Right. Where And, and I think if, if you look back on, on how marriage used to be, people were getting married a whole lot younger because they were prioritizing family and yeah. legacy and having children and what we can build together, what we can establish together. Now the bag is the new legacy. The bag mm-hmm. is the new family. The bag is the new goal. And right. so- the bag has taken center stage at the expense of the family. So now you find people who are making a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year, got all the money that they can wish for in for mm-hmm. generation or two. Yeah. Nice house, nice car, all the clothes you can wish for, and nobody to really share that with. Nobody mean and, and it's hard to find somebody meaningful to share that kind of stuff with. So that's what I meant when I said it's it's a losing strategy because by the time you hit 30, 32, 35 years old. It is it is increasingly more difficult to find someone to, quote unquote, spend the rest of your life with. And I'll tell you this, coming from a single woman who has been on dating sites, you know, and things of that sort, the the amount of men that I see that are professional, that are in their 40s, that don't have children. It's a lot of them out here. And they don't have children because many of them have chosen to go get the bag. The difference between them and a woman is that they're going to still be putting a seed. They see keep dropping. They they see can drop to 99, you know, and won't have no implications on the the health of that child, you know. And so but when a woman, when she's when her she's born with her eggs, her eggs are there as an infant. So you got by the time you turn 30, your eggs are 30 years old. And that's where you get the the Down syndrome and all those types of things coming uh, coming on with the baby. You know, you because the the eggs are old. It's not it's not that you ate something wrong. The eggs are old. They have to be fertilized in a short in a certain amount of time, which is why a woman then goes into menopause in her 50s. So if you 15 years out from your menopause, menopausal state, just think about that. Think about how close to, you know, your eggs not being worth anything. And so that even going back into the ancient times, like we talked about earlier, a woman's financial value, according to according to this marriage history, because there's a it's an actual uh, uh, um, journal educational journal called the marriage history. And according to them, they said that woman's financial value was linked to her sexual purity. So her virginity helped men know that they were protecting their lineage because the the likelihood, you know how they say mama's baby, daddy's maybe, they knew it was going to be that mama's baby, but they weren't quite sure if, you know, there were some things about that that said, hey, you know what, was she sleeping with somebody, you know, like a day before or, you know, there, there's there's so many different odd things that have happened where a woman has had sex and didn't get fertilized for weeks. You know, there's a lot of different things that happen. So you have to put those numbers together and, and it doesn't solidify his lineage. It yeah. doesn't protect his bloodline. So that's why they were doing you know, they were making sure that they were marrying virgins. And see, what happened is when the men became the, uh, became controlling, because there's, there's a thing called coverture. 
Coverture is means a coverage in French. And in the coverage in French, it was telling the men that now you have to cover and protect. And when you cover and protect something, what do you do? You think it belongs to you. It becomes property. And the children become an asset. The children become an asset because now you're going to work off my business. Yeah, I might love you, but you're going to work this business. You don't get a choice. And so now the women are raising up. Here comes the feminist movement, feminist movement. And they want an equal rights and all these other things that they wanted. Because once the, once the situation happened in English, when they said that they're going to take the man's name, that was, that was solidifying the fact that you not belong to him. So now you got women saying, I'm not taking... I'm not taking his name or I'm going to hyphenate or I'm going to keep my name all together. All these different things because they didn't like the treatment that they were getting. Not to say that it was right, wrong. You know, it wasn't right that they got mistreated because of their belonging. But these are the things that happened back in the day. Yeah. Well, again, to, to the point that you made earlier, when, when you don't uh, operate in the fullness of um, purpose. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you don't understand or when you don't use a thing correctly, abuse of that thing is inevitable. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like you just said, marriage, the state of the institution of marriage had been abused. And yeah. so women were in many regards taken on as property and treated accordingly. And yeah. so the initially how I was saying that there was so much that you were asking of a woman when you were asking her to be your, your wife. Right. It, it became duty and obligation and you better do this. Like right. it's not even optional anymore. You're going to have my children as many as I want. And then not only that, there was very little appreciation being shown for that. And so right. when this feminist movement comes into, into play, you have women that are rebelling against that because there, where's the appreciation for the stay at home mom? Where's right. the appreciation for the stay-at-home wife? No, society right. doesn't value that anymore. And so women who want to stay home and, and homeschool their children. Look, as especially for black people, there has never been a time more critical than now to homeschool our children. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. And, and you don't find very many women these days that, that want to do that because it's been a thankless job for so long. Yeah. And so now at a time when you need it the most, you have the least amount of participation. And this participation or even enablement. This is that pendulum effect. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, you you swing so wide on this end, abusing it that when it comes back full circle and you need you really, really need it, now the women are like, you know, I'm mm-hmm. not really all that interested. And, and and as a matter of fact, you have a lot of women who don't even care if they never have children. Yeah. And this is the thing I'm telling y'all, if you all don't really recognize the sign of the times that we're in, that you're going to have to get back to community. You're going to have to get back to the, the, the unity of the relationship of the, or the ordained meant of the relationship, because when you, if you don't, you're going to be relying upon a system that's going to be completely against you and it's not going to give you nothing and it's going to ultimately kill you off. So if you do not understand that it is not to the benefit of you saying, I don't need no man. Oh, forget women. I'll go my own way. Stay single when it's all hit the fan. You better have some real good, either if you if you are a single mom or a single daddy, or you got brothers and sisters, y'all better have some real good other relationships. Because when you by yourself trying to trying to trying to deal with what's about to get, I hope that y'all see yeah, what is about to go down. And we're not talking about back in the day. How many times are you when you young, you heard your mama say the rapture coming and the Lord going uh-huh. coming back for us. And you've been hearing all your life. So now people are numb to that. And I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about before that even happens. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about next three, five years. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey y'all, do us a favor. If you haven't already hit that like button, hit that like button for us and share the video if you haven't already. Helps Please. us with the uh, with the algorithms and such. Give us yeah. our just do. Uh, h- here's another way that the game has changed. You know, You hear so many people talking about, let's say you hear guys saying that uh, women aren't like what our grandmothers used to be like. 
And then you hear women saying, these men aren't what my grandfather used to be like. Yeah. And what you find now is that we have all of the comforts and the conveniences of the modern world, but we want, we still want traditional people. And now, me, do you think that that's true? Because I think that some people are against the traditions, which is why we why the game changed. Well, again, th there are variances, right? Because yeah. we still want women to cook and clean. We we still want to be catered to in that way. But we want the men to provide and protect. But 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 we still want our wives to go out and work a full time job. You see, and, and it's just th there's a blurring of the lines, yeah. right? And and. and you know, we want men to go out and 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 build the house and be able to fix the car and grind, grind, grind. But you still want him to come home and be your comforter and and talk, you know, pillow talk with you. And and so, men aren't the way our grandfathers used to be any more than women are what our grandmothers used to be. And so we're having a hard time massaging the the generational differences so that they work for us. Yeah. And, and so we're many of us are caught in this fantasy land of what it used to be. And and let's keep it a buck, man. It wasn't all that great back then for our grandparents, because half the time for a lot of us, for a lot of us, our grandmothers would have left if they had the resources to leave. Yeah. Because they weren't being treated very nice. Yeah. Right. Not all. Of course, and, you know. and that's why they're against the whole the reason or the purpose of the marriage because they felt like they weren't getting the emotional support. But see, this is the thing that you got to keep in mind when marriages were created, you know, back in the day, and we always talk about back in the day, when they were created back in the day, what happened is the women were home with the with the babies, right? And they were home with other women that were home with their babies. So they're there, for lack of better terms, just so I can, you can see the coupling, the pillow talk was girl talk. So then when her man came home, she wasn't talking to him about those things. She had got all her emotional satisfaction out by hanging with her girls and the babies, because right. that is that oxytocin that's trying to be rebuilt up in her from the nurturing and all of that. And so she needed to get that building up and she got it with the women. The men, on the other hand, they got that, that testosterone built up by being at work with other men, competing at work with other men, making sure that they're trying to get that, 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 that promotion or they're trying to show their, their bosses what they can do best. Those are the types of things. So they got what they needed in those senses of the, the genders, right? It was it, where there's some where there's some um, imbalances. Absolutely, there was, but there's imbalances in the world. Period, and especially now. Yeah, yeah. So that's Yali says population crash in about thirty years. All those strong and independent women talking that sugar, honey, iced tea today will be on psych meds, be dog and cat parents, and box wine drinkers, invest in Purina and box wine producing companies. I agree, but you should have put men in there too. Yep. I'm going to tell you, look, as quiet as it's kept, there are a lot of men who are alone who hate the fact that they're alone. Yep. It, it ain't just women right now that's, you know, that's hurting. It, man, look, I, I have clients right now. Me too. Men who are hating the fact that they can't find a wife or that they have not found a wife yet. So it, people are hurting right now. It ain't just women. No, it's not. And, I, and I'll and tell you another thing too, man, just, just with what I've come to appreciate from what my wife adds to my life, just the comfort that I get from being out and then being able to come home and, and get that rejuvenation, man, you can't get that when you're alone, brothers. And, and, and even though you might be able to find a woman who you can have sex with, it's it's not the same as having a woman who, ha who has got your back. Right. Right. It, right. It, it, it hits different. I'm telling you. So and, and a lot of brothers know that we just you know, right now we got this false bravado thing going on, you know, and and men don't really like to be as expressive and show our feelings and talk about our feelings. But I'm going to tell you, man, it. Some brothers out here hurting right now. So let's talk about that. Let's talk. Let's couple that with our title. Has the game of love changed? Why is it 
that we find so many men that are no longer chasing, meaning that they're no longer being the the four uh, the forerunners of the relationships going after the woman. Do you think that it's because they lack security, they lack confidence? What do you think that that issue is? Because I'm sure that some of the women that are on here are going to ask that question. Yeah, yeah. I, I like for the family to chime in on that too, but I, I do have an idea about that. Um, Yar Yarley says this is true, but men can survive and have always survived. Uh, women enhance our lives. So always having a woman is a good thing. Nah, brother, having a woman is a great thing. <laughs> it is. And women women survive too. We got yeah. single mothers who are raising. <laughs> we can survive without each other, but we cannot we can. thrive. We cannot thrive. We cannot thrive. And, as, and this is the thing. I want to say this. As long as we keep saying, oh, I can survive, then you're going to keep just surviving. Were you here to survive or were you here to thrive in abundance? Right. I mean, you weren't here just to be, just to exist as uh, what did Robert said that up here. Let me go here. He talks about some of, some are coming up with different perspectives, alternatives to marriage. And to be frank and honest, most are not building. They're just prospering. They're not prospering. They're just being. That's and right. I don't even think they're just being because being means you're doing something. I think they're just existing day to day, yeah. no purpose in mind. You see people like that. And if you if you really saw them and what they really what that really was, when you see people doing the same thing day in and day out, there is nothing that they've done, nothing that they've accomplished, nothing that they can look back on and sit on sit on their rocking chair at 93 and go, this is what my life looked like. You sit there going, well, what you do? Well, you know what? I don't even know. And, and oh, man, that's I mean, existing. Yeah, we're we're not we're not um what did it say we're not living we're surviving. Yeah, that's we're it. Not, we're not we're not we're not we're making a living, but we're not we're not living our making. Right. Right. And so he said that so because men today, men today are being told that they are no longer needed in the black community, so men are no longer chasing the black woman because of this reason. I I, I concur. I do. And so this is why this is why I created the Core Woman Academy to help women understand that, you know, we're the core. Right. Not that we are the all be all to that, but we are the core. We're the we're the, the center of that thing. And if you and this is I'm really trying to work on. So if y'all know somebody to know how to draw really well, send them my way, because I'm really trying to get somebody to draw this for me. But. The core of the woman, if you, if anybody that's working out, they want their core tight. Why? Because that core is going to strengthen their entire body. It's going to make sure that your, your arms are strong. And if they're not strong, they're going to be weak. You're going to have tingling in the hand. And the arms is the reach in the family, the reach in the community. I'm sorry. Your arms are your reach. Your back is your faith, right? Your head is the man. Your legs are your children. Your legs take you through and walk you through and get you through the legacy of that thing. So the woman being the core of that body, if she is not in position, if she is not strong, if she is not in her rightful place doing what she was called to do, then everything else is out of alignment. You got headaches. You got shoulder pain. You got sciatic nerves going down your leg. You got, you got arms and, and, and tingly. All of that stuff in your body is messed up. Yeah. And I know that that puts some pressure on women, but that's the real, that's the realness of it. it, it you know, this game is meant to have some pressure on us because uh, I, it, it's designed to, to have some pressure on us. I, and, you know, part of um, you mentioned the uh, feminist movement earlier mm -hmm. and, and what that did, it, it, quote unquote, liberated women. Right. And so now th there was a time when, you know, we it could liberated us. Yeah. Lie. yeah. And, and we couldn't have sex so freely, you know, a, a hundred years ago. Hell, even when I was coming up, it was you know, that was the beginning of it. I think the tail end of, of women being, you know, somewhat thought of as still kind of virtuous. Yeah. And, and you look now, man. It there it doesn't seem to be very many virtuous women left, and there don't seem to be very many honorable men anymore. Right. And so this is also what kind of watered the game down. You flood the market with 
easy sex. And and what you do is you kill the motivation for men to want to marry. Right. Why, why buy the cow when you can get the milk free? For free. Right. So and that and and the thing, like you said, the thing back in the day, you 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 knew, you know, we talked about being virgins. You a virgin, I'm still one. You girl, you are too. Oh, let me tell you about so and so. She over there having sex, girl. Are you kidding me? You for real? She really did it for real. Now you look at the virgins on you a virgin. What? Right, right. And you 18, girl. You better go get you some. She's a weirdo, right? She's a weirdo. She's a unicorn. And don't let state. it be a, don't let it be a guy and, and he's a virgin at 18 or 21. Oh, you you super weird. And, so and what weird. they've done is they even with even with men. They've they've pushed this narrative that you should sow your wild oats. Now, now think about this. The most powerful act available to human beings is the ability to reproduce life. Yeah. And it has been reduced to a nut. <laughs> right. Just it's just it just feels good. And, and oh, man, what? You pregnant? Oh, man. What are we going to we going to keep it? What we going to do? Why are we going to keep it? <laughs> I was listening to this uh, this sister in Africa. There was this panel and there was a European woman on this panel with these Africans. I wish I got to pull that video up for us for the next show. But she was talking to them. She was in Africa talking to these Africans and it was a panel of Africans. And this and, and the, the European woman was talking about the beauty of choice, mm -hmm. women having the freedom to decide whether or not they want to have an abortion or just freedom. And then, you know, and, and she made it sound so liberating. And then the African woman got up there. She said, we don't even have a word in our culture for what mm -hmm. it is you're offering us. Like there is no such thing as what do we do once we're pregnant? It's, it's a no brainer. We get pregnant. We have the baby. But but and see, so in our indigenous culture prior to colonization, we didn't have any concept for getting rid of children yeah. because righteous minded people, healthy minded people understand that children are your future. And so if you're aborting children, you're literally aborting your future. You are. And this is the thing, yeah. like yeah. when you start having when you start having, you know, back in the day, we controlled or the parents controlled their households. You you did what your mama said to do without question. You wasn't questioning her. You weren't asking her why, because all you needed to my wife. Mm. You get that look, you turn your butt on around and you keep going. Now it's the why, what you mean, what you're talking to me, like all these things, because you have things like cold Carla. Anybody know about Cole Carla? If you're a woman and you my age, you knew Cole Carla. Cole Carla was the doctor calling you to tell you that she was pregnant. It was the it was the it was the doctor calling you as a teenager to talk to you about your care because your mother had no rights over your body any longer. And it's it's and, and I understood the whole thing about you know, that 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 she should, you know, know her body and understand her body and be able to talk to the doctor, but you shouldn't be able to go get birth control pills when you a child mm. because you got cold Carla. You shouldn't be able to go in the abortion office and get an abortion without the consent. You know, back in the day in the ancient times we talked about, you couldn't even get married without consent at 25. There was that was the of age legal age was 25. Pay attention to why these things are happening, why the, the age was younger for you to go and care for your child. Why? Because those children didn't have the mindset it needed to take to be able to make the right decisions. Also, the younger, when they started making the age younger for consent, being consensual adults is now 16 in some areas, 18 now mostly, right? Why was that? So that the people that was abusing and, and doing things to these young girls wouldn't be in trouble anymore. It's all. <laughs> it's all for real a play. Yeah. It really is. Yardley says, first point, men can survive by conquering and controlling the environment for the benefit of women. Women do not. 
men go out to hunt the lions, tigers, and the bears. If women did the same thing, equality, what would they not be doing? Having sex. Hunting with men gives a woman equal chance of being killed by said creatures. Now, look, this is one of those perspectives. It sounds, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Yarly, but that sounds like the type of perspective that makes the argument that men are somehow more important than women. Right. And I'm saying there is nothing more important than people. And you cannot get more people without the agency of women. So, yeah, we go and hunt and we conquer it, but, but we're doing it for women. If it, I would not live in the house that I live in. I would not drive the car that I drive. I would not smell as good as I smell. I wouldn't do half the things that I do if I didn't have a woman in my life. You understand? So, so regardless of what the, the motivation or, or, or what the drive might be, we wouldn't do these things. These things would not even be worth the effort in many regards if it was not for our feminine complement. And so, uh, again, I, I put a, a premium on people and you do not get more people without the agency of the woman. And, and, and I'll even go a step further and say without healthy minded women, you don't produce healthy minded children. Look at the, you, you don't need to look any further than our community right now. We have a bunch of unhealthy minded women. Why are they unhealthy? We can we can list a, a myriad of reasons for that. Right. But we don't have women who want to breastfeed children. We don't have women who want to homeschool children. So what we're doing is we're spitting children out and we're sending them to daycare so we can get back to business of getting that bag. And we're 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 producing children who do not mirror the value system that we need in order to be competitive for future generations. There's nothing more important than women. I'm not saying that women are more important than men. I'm not saying, I know we're not equal. There are things that women can do that men can't do. There are things that men can do that women can't do. We're not supposed to be equal per se. We're supposed to balance each other out. Look, salt and pepper are not equal. They do different things. But damn it, give me some scrambled eggs with just salt on them and it ain't so good. Give me something with just pepper on them and it ain't so good. But you put a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Now we got us a bacon, a bacon egg, and you know, <laughs> right, with some grape jelly on it. You know, total sandwich. You know, down this the thing. I want to counter, and, and I'm I'm not I I don't want to divide, but I really want to counter this because I really need men, these men who think that they can just go and do whatever they want to. This is the thing. I'm about to go a little barbaric. Go ahead. <laughs> a woman can go snatch a dude, put him in the corner, make him get his seat out, take a, a turkey baster, insert her his seed into her, and impregnate her without ever touching his penis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She, there are indigenous communities that don't that 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 are that are matriarchal in nature, that are killing the animals and feeding the children and taking care of all of that. But does that mean that they're not going to eventually need a man to come and bring some more seed? They're going to need that. There is nothing that we can do a side of each other. And if we don't start saying that and sticking to that, we're going to keep having the mindsets that we don't need each other. That is a problem. And it is causing such a, it's wreaking havoc. Cause tell me, tell me how long men going to be by themselves. Hmm. Cause once they die, then what you can't, a man can't carry a baby. So even if she just went and got a donor, she still can carry and get and, and bring it out to this world by herself. 
But that does not mean that she does not need even the peace of him. We, we, we got to stop putting this, we, we got to stop minimizing the value on each other, making it seem like, oh, you just a little bit. No, you just a little bit. No, I only need you for this. No, I only need you for that. We need each other, period. And, and we, we, we don't get it. We too busy arguing and bickering back and forth talking about, oh, yeah, I don't need you. Yeah. Go ahead and see how that work out for you. It's you know, not. You, you could even go to the Bible where, was it Solomon who had a thousand wives? Look, men uh, for ages have had multiple wives. Um, but, but I think... I don't know. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to push the envelope here a little bit. And I'm going to say that any man who has ever had multiple wives, um, I think that is abuse of what the union was created for. Anything more than because think about this now, we, we got a lot of sexual energy. Right. But that same energy. See. The game is so cold, man, and they, and we've been so misled, and, and we think that just because you get that urge that you're supposed to squirt, right, right. But that that's the same energy. That energy is is used to create. So every time you release, you're going to create something. Yes. Whether it's with another woman, whether it's with another man, you're always creating something. The question is what? What? And so sometimes we're creating a child. If we're with our designated mate, we're creating harmony. We're creating bliss. If you're stepping outside of your mate, you're creating chaos, right? Now, there, there's this idea. I've heard some very prominent pastors say things like, well, men need sex. Uh, women don't, right? Because it, it's going to come out one way or another if men don't have sex. Look, women have wet dreams, too, right? <laughs> So and, and if you look at it, when women are in a position where they can really speak their peace, women are just as possessive and jealous and territorial of their man as men are. And sexual. We have those conversations like y'all be doing up in the barbershop. I say women enjoy it when it's done right. Women enjoy sex more than men ever could. Right. Yep, so we can keep going and going and going and going yeah. and going. Speaking in tongues. We don't do that. My back don't arc. My, you know, I, I don't do all that. As we go, right. I don't do all that. <laughs> I think I'm jealous. I'm like, damn, I wish. I, why can't now, I get you, you experiencing I get, that? Yeah. Yeah. Out of body experience. I don't get none of that. So what I'm, I'm saying all that to say this. Might is has been right. It's kind of like the United States and its military. We have a bigger, stronger, more powerful military. And if you are a nation whose military is smaller, we have more might. So we're right. Big bank takes little bank. And so men are physically stronger. And so we have physically dominated our women. But it has a return, right? It has a pendulum effect. There's a boomerang. You send out bad energy. That thing is coming back. And what we're doing now is we're reaping what we have sown. And we have we have sown so much disharmony into the union with our woman that what we're getting on the return of that, the return on that investment is ugly, is chaotic, is disharmonious. And we're looking at the woman like, what the hell is wrong with you? Well, I'm going to tell you what the hell is wrong with her. What's wrong with her is that we have sown continuous and incessant seeds of disharmony. And I'm not just blaming the men. I mean, this thing goes round and round. This thing has probably got so much more history on it than I can spit on this one show. But I'm saying it's, it's layers to this thing. It's levels to this thing. It ain't just the women that's out of whack. Men, look, King Solomon was wrong when he had a thousand wives. King David was wrong when he sent Bathsheba's husband to war. Men have always, not always, but for since time immemorial, there have been men who have abused the authority of what it means to be a man. And we have sown discord into the relationship with our woman. Really has. And so with that whole alpha, we keep talking about that. It just, you know, it means first. So if, it, and the reason why it comes that way is because according to what I believe and some people believe and some people don't, the man was here first. That's really what that means. So then what does his, 
When you think about the order of things, what is his responsibility to do it first? If you find that your that your that your household is out of order, you go for I love when Brother James talks about this. I don't know if he's on here today. When he talks about how when he realized that his marriage was on the brink of breakup, he went out first and got help for his marriage. He went to learn how to be a husband. He went to learn how to be a better man so that he can come back to his household and solidify his household. Instead, what's happening is many men are going out and saying, well, it ain't working. I'm just going to find me something else. That's a cop out. If that ain't simpness, Y'all yeah. know I'll be making up words. If yeah. that ain't sickness, I don't know what it is. Because I always say the, the best way to prove your real manhood is being able to handle one woman. Because we a trip. If you can handle us and, and, and really get us in position because you're being that man, that is a man. Mm. Look, it's so. And I might have hurt some feelings, and I'm sorry. Look, it's it's so much easier to get a woman's body than it is to get her mind. Come on. Now, now, look. Any man can get a woman's body, but not every man can get a woman's mind. And I'm telling you, the only men who don't care, or, or who say they don't care about love and being loved by a woman are men who have never been loved by a woman. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm telling you, once you have a woman who, it's one thing for her to give you her body, but when a woman emotionally invests in you, come on, man, look, when a woman emotionally invests in you, the game changes. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it. You're talking about, look, I, I, I know guys, we talk about this high value man conversation right we and and you have a lot of men who make six figures and they're having a hard time finding a woman that isn't there just for the money you can find women who will uh, who will come in and and do the job and play the role mm -hmm. but are they really with you for the reasons that that you want them to be there men are having just as much trouble i'm telling you finding complementarity in relationships that women are having. Yeah. And, and, and the game is so cold, man. The game is so cold. But ultimately, the objective, listen to me, bro. Listen to me, brothers. The objective, if you can find a woman who emotionally invests in you, I'm talking about just sell out for you. That's a game changer. And that's what the Bible means when it says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah. And this is what, like she says, a man should love his wife like Christ loved the church, Israel. Yeah. Christ gave his life for her. The man only has one life to give. So he should only have one wife to give it to. Not multiple because you can have multiple orgasms in a week. That's some foolishness. It's foolish. And, and we and and we don't understand the 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 rim the rim uh, ramifications for that. Mm -hmm. The ramifications are that are grave, and we we just think that it's just this is some. No, it's not something that we don't get it. Look, you so show me, you, you show. Ahead. Look, we're talking about uh, women who give their men permission to have multiple women, right? And even um, Bill Gates, they just got a divorce. And it came out that his wife, quote unquote, blessed his relationship with his side chick. Mm. Now, what I'm saying is this. You show me a woman who doesn't mind that you have a side piece and I'll show you a woman who's not emotionally invested in you. Yep. Right. And. I'll also show you that that same woman probably has a side piece of her own. So if you're just together for business purposes, hey, do you. If that's what your contract is about, all right, you know, whatever. I enjoy what I have because yeah. I don't like to share. I tell you right now, I'm territorial as hell. You can call it jealous. You can call it insecure. You call it whatever the hell you want. But if I find somebody sniffing around my tree, it's a whole problem. I don't right. share 
And, and so the the only way that I can bring that type of emotional investment from my woman into me is to agree with her that, hey, I'm not going to share or that she doesn't have to share either. So now we have a covenant. You call it a contract. I call it a covenant. Right. We have a covenant where I'm not sharing. She's not sharing. And we get the most out of this union that you can that you can get. I mean, once you start sharing, then that loop is no longer closed. Now it's open. And then all you invite all kinds of things into the situation. And so there's an African proverb that says when there's no enemy within the enemy outside can do you no harm. Yeah. Once you open up, you invite all kinds of things into your union that can begin eating at the core of what it means to be one. Right. Yeah. I want to, so Yali says, I agree to that point, but why must a man handle a woman like she can't control herself? I believe that you handle animals because you need a desired outcome from them. When I talk about the word handle, I'm not talking about as handle as in control. I'm talking about being able to have the capacity to deal with. If you don't have the capacity to deal with her and you will in, 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 uh, inevitably abuse her. If you don't have the capacity to deal with the emotional spouts that she may have, then you're not going to want to stay around because you you don't understand the dynamics of how you all how both male and gen, male and female genders respond to each other. A male is going to hold in his emotions because he's been taught to, and a woman's going to let hers out. A man's going to process his emotions. A woman has to talk about it. And if a man doesn't know how to handle or have the capacity to deal with that, he's going to walk out and find something else. So I'm not talking about the thing and handle. See, this is the thing. 99, and I ain't going to say 100% because sometimes I, be want, I, I had to repent today for on a deal, but I ain't going to tell you a hundred percent of the time I'm positive, but 99.5% of the time, when I say something, I'm talking about the positive side of it. I'm not going to talk about the negative thing of handling her like she's an animal or handling her like she's controlling her. If I'm saying that this is what needs to happen, it's going to come from the positive side. So I'm talking about handling as in having the capacity to be able to deal with everything that comes with her. Especially if you know that she's not a virgin, you know that she might have some children, you know that she might have some relationships or some marriage in the past, all of these different things, then you have to know when you walk in the door after you done dated her for a few times and you sat on bending knee and you said, can you marry me or will you marry me? Everything that she's been through has the capacity or the propensity to come up in your relationship, especially if she's not done any work. So if you walk in the door thinking that this woman got two kids She'd been married twice and her, her daddy wasn't around. Her mama was a crackhead and all these things. And you think that she's going to, you're going to come in and, and she's healthy and she's able to handle, right? Deal with, have the capacity to deal with you as your gender. And she don't know nothing about it because she hasn't been taught it. We are mistaken. We cannot think that we can walk into a relationship and you you listen to this person tell you how many times they've been hurt and they say well things like because i don't heard women talk about it all the time why would he hurt me when he knew everything i went through or well, why would he do the same things that that man did when i told him everything because she most likely gonna tell you everything she went through hmm. so when you walk into the door and you didn't heard all her story and you still stay there that means you have the you need to have the capacity to deal with all the stuff that she got, plus some of the things she ain't never told you about. Look, Robert Lee says, that is true as me, and we need to be able to handle the emotional side of a woman, but women need to be able to handle when a man say, look, put your emotions aside and use logic. Now watch this. <laughs> Masculine and feminine energy emotes differently, right? Men look to or, or masculine, the masculine energy in us looks to control emotion. The feminine energy looks for freedom to express emotion. There is a different, we're, we're not, there's not as much of a difference between what we want, but there is, there is, a, there are some differences in how we operate. Now, many of us want our women to just put a harness on their emotions, right? 
but that's not how they're wired. And so much of what's required to put that battery in your back and, and to cater to you in ways that we want to be catered to, to coddle us when we, you know, women, the, the nurturing that they offer, that comes from an emotional place. And we can't have it both ways. That thing that makes them soft, like Yardley just said above, she should be feminine, beautiful, aspirational, and cooperative. Well, she's going to come, she's going to show up. Let me put that back up. She's going to show up feminine, beautiful, aspirational, but you don't get the cooperation until you tap into what it means to be harmonious with her, right? That thing that inspires her to be feminine and, and soft is that same thing that drives her to be as emotional as she is. You can't have one without the other. There's a quote that says, every, um, how does it go? Every, every adversity, brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. Right. Right. So in her mood swings and all this fire, that's an adversity, but it brings the advantage of offering your life something that you can't get from a boyfriend. Right. <laughs> you can't get from a dude what you get from your woman. Right. And so it doesn't mean that women should be given a license to just fly off the handle and right. be you out and, you know, losing, the, losing their cool all the time. That, that's not the point at all. What I'm saying, though, is that there is a there is a dynamic balance and a synergy that takes place when you when the pursuit is always harmony with the woman. But you disturb that when you run off, when you when you don't want to be attentive to what it is that that she's looking for from you or when you look to escape with another woman. I mean, all you do, we do so many things, each of us too, because women do it too. We, yeah. We're in a place now where we're doing so many things to undermine the health of the relationship. And we're wondering why we can't have what our grandparents had. Right. Now check this out. Here's a, here's a her perspective on what, uh, what Robert said. Now, yes, it is very true that the woman, uh, wants that man to be able to handle her emotional side and that you say that, but women need to be able to handle it. When a man says, put your emotions aside and use logic, look at it this way. When she tells you to put your logic aside and be more emotional, mm -hmm. how easy is that? It's the same thing because you are wired differently. The problem, let me tell y'all the major problem that most relationships are having, it always boils down to this one major thing. You don't understand each other's gender. You don't understand how each other's functions. I tell my clients all the time, baby, it's not personal. Baby, it is not personal. Your man is acting like the man down the street, the man down the block, man up there, man over there. Same thing. Your woman is acting like the woman over there, the woman over there, the woman up there. It is how we were wired. We were created this way for the main purpose that we were here to procreate, be fruitful and multiply. The woman's natural oxytocin bonding thing that makes her emotional and all of those things that draws her to you where she can't get enough of you and she can't try to figure out why you don't want to spend that much time with me and why we can't sleep here all day long and you like, I got to go work. I'm trying to figure out how to make this go and you want me to just sit here and chill. They need a goal. The man has a goal. I tell my clients all the time. You want your man to sit and chill? Tell him that we're going to watch this movie so that we can talk about the end of it. And we're going to discuss this. And in the in that, we're going we're gonna to figure out how we can use this for us. He'll watch that whole movie to the end because he's looking for the purpose. He looking for the, he's looking for the solution to what you told him he needed to do. If you don't give him that, he's not going to sit and cuddle with you. 
If you want a woman to tie in to what you're trying to do and you're trying to get business and you're trying to work 16 to 20 hours a day so that you can build this business, you tell her how she's going to be able to tap into making sure that her children are going to be generationally okay. You tap into her emotions of how it's going to make her family okay. You will then be able to create harmonious cooperation instantly. But if you don't understand that male and female, I don't care, black, white, purple or green, male and female is going to always be different. You will never come together without learning how to do so or being taught from the beginning because you don't understand the gender. Hence, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Watch this. Instead of, treat, instead of teaching you it in the school, they just write a book so that they can go buy it. Check this out. We are all emotional beings with varying degrees of being logical or varying degrees of expressing logic, right? It's not that women are emotional and men are logical. It's just that women are emotion, more emotional. Men tend to be, you know what? I'm going I'm to reverse feel on that because men, I, I don't know that men are categorically um, less emotional um, than women, because in many ways I see men lose their cool all the time. We just express it very differently. Right. But here's where I'm going with this. Watch this. In the day that you decide as a man that your woman's feelings are as important as your thoughts. Huh? There you go. There when, you go. When <laughs> come on now, when you decide that how your woman feels is just as important as what you think, yes. the game changes. Changes now, in the until then, though, she's always going to feel like you're belittling her, like what she feels is less important than what you think, yeah. right? And you will never have harmony in your relationship, never. And you will never have what it is that you're trying to get from her, that battery in your back in the way that you need it most. She's, there's always going to be chaos in your home. I'm going to repeat. The day that you determine that it is just as important how she feels as, as it is how you think, it changes everything. And I'm going to go in the same direction with women. The day you determine that how what he thinks is just as important as how you feel. Come on now. Change Changed. Again. Harm instant harmony. Harmony. Instant. Let me tell you how you can do that really quickly. Stop talking to your woman and asking her what she thinks. Ask her what she feels. Stop talking to your man and asking him what he feels. Ask him what he thinks. When you start to speak each other's language, you start to listen to each other and you start to hear each other, creating that harmonious cooperation. But when you asking your woman, what you, what you, what you think about this? And she going, what? What you mean I think about this? And then she start telling her emotions and how she feel. And you try to, I ain't ask you all that. Well, that's what she's telling you. And then when you try to ask your guy, what you feel about this? And he going, what you mean? Let me let me solve it for you. Let me solve it for you. And you're like, I ain't asked you to solve nothing for me. I'm just trying to figure out what you feel. He ain't going to hear that. It's almost like you say to your man, what do you feel? He's doing this. You're like, huh? I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you. And you say to your woman, what do you think? <laughs> She's not going to hear it. It's going to be either either not heard or Greek. <laughs> and, and you know, and, and Coach Michelle is is being exaggerative, uh, you know, a bit, but because you can't get thoughts and feelings from both, you know, whatever. But the point is still valid. You know, women tend to speak in terms of "I feel this way," and men don't typically say "I feel this" or "I feel that." Not typically. Not there typically. are there, of course, there are exceptions. We do, right? You know, and That's women cool. do say "I think," but typically when we talk. And when men speak, we say, well, I think this, I think that women say, I feel this and I feel that. So we're differences, but the differences are to be respected. Yeah. Rather than yeah. amplified. 
because right now what we have is a state of where we're just amplifying differences for the purpose of ostracizing one another, making exactly. fun of and minimizing and marginalizing each other. You can't win like that. Yeah. We cannot win like that. You can't. Uh, you always talking about how you feel. I ain't asked you all that. Right. And how she feels is important because mm. what you're trying to tap. Listen, man, emotions are like superpowers, right? I, I, listen, I know a lot, I, I, I tend to get a little bit in the, you know, occultic way of thinking things, right? But your emotions are like superpowers and men have them too. And the reason that you know emotions are, they're, they're great fuel. And the reason you know that this is true is because there are things that when you feel strong about it, men too now, if you feel strong about it, when the emotions are charged, the facts don't matter. No. Right? When no. the emotions are charged, the facts don't matter. And, and so if, if your emotions are charged towards something constructive, toward building something, toward establishing something, doing great things, then you can accomplish things that if you just thought about it, you'd be like, man, I, I don't know, that, that, that walk is a bit farther than I want to go. Or that hill look like it's a bit too high for me to climb. But let your wife be sick. And the antidote to her sickness is on the other side of that mountain. You on your way. Right? Yep. It ain't nothing to think about. So I'm saying yep. emotions make great servants, but horrible masters. Yep. You got to learn how to master those emotions and be able to control them. If you start controlling your emotions, whether it's anger, because I always in, in my master your emotions workshop, I talk about a man's anger is a woman's tears. Mm. So when when you you sit there and you just see how bad she like I I when if you see me cry don't come over and go woo 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 no move out the way because <laughs> I'm crying oh I'm I'm ticked off I'm ready to fight okay if you see a man angry he can still be feeling that emotion like oh I just want to cry you heard a man I'm ain't so mad I just want to cry. You know, because that's the same type of emotion. It's just expressed differently. It's the height of it. That's really all that it is. But we don't understand each other. So we're fighting each other based off of what we think and we should feel. Now, I'm a thinker. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a thinker. I'm an I'm a imp, empath, but I'm a thinker. So you want to get productivity out of me? Ask me what I think. You want me to love on you and nurture you? Ask me what I feel. So I'm both, right? But you gotta be able to listen to your partner. You can't just go in and think that you could treat your partner the same way you did the last chick or, or bruh. You gotta go in and listen to that partner. I say walk into relationships acting like you're dumb as hell, okay? <laughs> Don't go in there thinking that you know anything. Go in there like you dumb. Learn your new partner or the partner that you're with and figure them out, leave all that other stuff, past P-A-S-T, properly awarded, safe travels. Leave it back there, deal with what you got in front of you so that you can learn how to deal with your partner. But most people are not doing that. They just want to take their experiences and go with them. Mm -hmm. Thinking that everybody, look, you don't even show up. You don't even show up in each relationship the same way because you're relating every relationship is unique yeah. so i'm with my wife if i don't want to use me as an example because that's just different but i'm saying you take one man and you put him in five different relationships and he's going to have five different ways that he relates to the women because they all bring something unique and you can the same thing with women you take one woman and introduce her to five different men and she's going to behave uniquely with every man. Some characteristics. At least she should. Huh? At well, least no. she should. But many I'm times. Saying, I'm saying at her core, her core yeah. values don't necessarily change. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about the energy exchange that's taking place between the two. One man might make her hotter than the other. Right? She get a little bit more sexually charged with one dude mm -hmm. than the other. One dude may piss her off a little bit more. One dude might be funnier. You know, and, and the same thing with men. It's We're all different beings. And this is why you know, I, I like to use this acronym for sex. Sex is a, a sacred energy exchange. Love it's it. not just 
you know, a, it's an energy exchange and everybody's in energy signature is unique. It's different. Yeah. And so it's going to hit different when you interact with somebody else. That's how you had girl six. Remember girl six back in the day? I never saw that. You never, she, she, yeah. she had six different men and she was like, I just got them all. They all fit that one man. She, instead of her <laughs> finding that one man, she had six of them where she, you know, was doing her thing. But I'm telling you, and you're right, Yarly, <laughs> men destroying the entire civilizations over emotions in the same time. Pharaoh, Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go because he was ticked off. Oh, no, nah, dude, you ain't coming up in here taking none from me. Sure. Right. You know, same sure. thing with David. David sent, sent the man off of emotions. I'm in love with her. I just need her. I got to have her for myself. Those are emotions. Yep. So we can't say that men don't have emotion or they're not emotional. That's not true. They just don't express them the same way as women do. Once we understand that we have die, we have die. Uh, what's the word I want to put? Diabolical. Yes. Differences in each other. Respect the differences. Learn the differences. Figure them out and then apply them to how you respond to each other instead of reacting out of what way I ain't doing. I'm going to love you the way I want to love you. No, love them the way they need to be loved. In order for you to do that, you have to figure them out. Yeah. So and, this and, is and good. Go and I, 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 let me let me add this one point, too, when it comes to emotions there. Nothing will charge your emotions higher than sexual energy. And, and I'm telling you, we have all done some really stupid. stupid things when we are sexually charged, right? And to the point that, that you were just talking about, David, and, and even when you're talking about Helen of Troy, is it Helen of Troy? Um, that she how how the, uh, they were trying to join nations and the son of the, uh, not Troy, but the son of the nation that was trying to merge with Troy he slept with the king's wife. The, 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 the level yes. of attraction was so high. Yes. It was so great. I mean, he was so allured by her that he did the unthinkable. He slept mm -hmm. with the king's wife. And not only did he sleep with her, she ran away with him. You are the queen. Right. And she ran away with yeah. the son of the nation that they were trying to make peace with. Yeah. And that destroyed everything. You Mess just took off a whole war, all because sexual discipline. They yeah, didn't, they didn't have it. Men have lost deals, major Paris, deals Paris. in their lives. Paris and Helen of Troy. Thank you, sir. Keep yeah, on. Yeah, because of that, they have. It's we need to we need to recognize and stop saying that men are not emotional and that women are not logic because. We it's use them both. We just use them differently. Right. A woman will be emotionally charged, passionate about something, and she's figuring it out. Oh, because I tell you, when I'm mad and I'm ticked off, well, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure out how to get it. And, and if, if I was a vindictive person, I would show, figure out how to get you back. All in my emotions. Because my logic may not think of the ends of the earth that I would go through if <laughs> you mess with me, right? Yeah. So we really have to pay attention to that. It's not that it's not that we're not. We just do it differently. Learn your learn your partner. Learn your partner. Ask okay. questions. Mm -hmm. Have uncommon conversations. Not the same. What you do? What you like to do for fun? Yeah. Get into their head. Figure it out. And then don't just get into their head for the two weeks that men be getting into their women's heads. Get into the head and stay there. We got to change the game, man. We, we, we have to establish a new culture, yeah. uh, a new cultural paradigm for how we deal with each other, yes. with, with each other. And maybe we might need to kick off a class for that, too. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. We need a new we need to establish a new culture. Because yeah. right now we're, we're facing some things that are that are not so pleasant. And if right now it's got us looking outside of ourselves for all of the answers that can only be um, found within us. Yeah. Right. And, and we're angry with each other. And you know how it is. Look, I, my favorite quote, anger is the wind that blows out the lamp of the mind. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. Show me somebody who's angry and I'll show you a fool in progress. Come on. Right. It is right there. Well, you, you, you make a speech when you're angry and, and, and you talk to your woman or your man when you're angry and you will make the greatest speech that you will ever regret. Come on. We, we have all said yep. things that we be like, after we calm down, we like, damn, I can't Man, I should have said calm. that. Yep. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I think here's the thing that you all, in, in order for you to first know your first, know your partner, you must first know yourself. Many people think that they understand their communication style and they don't. They just feel like I'm a good communicator. No, you're not. If your partner is, is if, if what you put now, my, my daughter says, are you picking up what I'm picking up mama, what you putting down? If you, if the person that you're talking to is not picking up what you putting down, then you're not effectively communicating. It is not them. Let's get that straight. It is not them. It's you. And if you feel like you haven't got to the place where you're effectively communicating it and they just being hard headed, they don't want to take what you're saying, then that's them. But you need to be able to get it where they're like, oh, I understand that. I, but I'm going to either accept it or reject it. Right. But that's effective communication is being able to convey the message where the hearer can understand it, not accept it or reject it, but just understand it. Right. And most people are so busy trying to be understood that they're forgetting the whole being understanding. Mm -hmm. And nobody's trying to do that. So we got to get to the place where we're starting to understand each other more and stop trying to, I got to get my point across. I need to say what I got to say. Stop that. It's foolishness. <laughs> so we've been on here for a, a long time. Yeah, nice. We can really keep going. This is a really good conversation. I'm having fun. Well, I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up. Okay. Get these people back home to their families. <laughs> right, right, right. So we thank you all so very much. And if you have not already shared this, please go ahead and share. Make sure that you're liking or loving it. We would love the hearts. Don't just yes, like right. it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Share, share, share. Go over to Coach Vaughn's Love Alchemist page on all social media platforms. Follow his page, like his page, go on to some of the videos that he already has on there. Watch some of those videos, get some real good knowledge, like them and follow them and share them. Same thing for me over at Coach Michelle Monet and all social media platforms, as well as our YouTube pages. We have YouTube pages. ATR, all things relevant. Make sure that you're liking and following that page because there's a lot of really good information on there. Some political stuff, some things about stocks and bonds and financial stuff. Go over and see all that stuff, right? Make sure that you're getting to their YouTube page as well, subscribing to the page, hitting the red bell so that you can get notification of any of the videos that we upload. So, yeah. Yeah, let me uh, share the link to our YouTube page. Yes. So, yeah, make sure y'all go ahead and uh, head on over to our YouTube page and hit that like and subscribe button for us. Please do that because let me tell y'all, if y'all don't already know, Facebook is getting ready to start charging business pages to go live. Mm -hmm. Okay. We really would love to be able to utilize our platform that is on YouTube so that we do not have to pay to give y'all free information. Mm -hmm. Right. If y'all like what we're doing, which apparently you do because you show up every single week, that means that you would go over to our YouTube page and subscribe at the his and her perspective show. It is not just his and her, it's the his and her perspective show. Go over to any of our podcasts, download some of our podcasts. We are coming up on our one year anniversary next month. We're going to do something great. We, 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 we working on it and we hope that you all will share as many as you can so that we can have this, make this a really good party. So we look at it this way. Would you want us to have an anniversary party and ain't nobody there? Wouldn't you come with a plus one or a plus two or a plus three? We'd like you to come with plus five. So if you can invite five people to our party, we might have something special for you. That's right. That's right. Normally, normally we ain't, we ain't looking for your plus ones because they eat too much. Right. But, but uh, we want y'all to come to our party and bring some people. We got some extra wings for y'all, some extra drink. You know, bring right. them here. Uh, look, let me, let me end on this too. Um, Y'all know that we are coaches and, and I, most couples are struggling. We all know that the divorce rate is incredibly high and the breakup rate is even higher. Yeah. 
But even the greatest basketball player of all time couldn't win without a coach. Now, if you want to call that Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Will Chamberlain, they all had coaches. Successful relationships, uh, the best of them have had some kind of coaching. And that's what we are here for. Um, I like to say that uh, there, there are a lot of couples that are out here winning, but they're not winning because they're doing extraordinary things. They're winning because they're doing ordinary things better than everybody else. So get yourself some coaching. Me, Coach Michilla, whichever one you like, both of us, we coach together. The important thing is to make sure that your relationship stays on track and that is thriving uh, because we got to start getting some wins, family. And yeah. so um, with that. Can I add one thing to that? Yep. If you are in a relationship right now and you're having issues in your relationship, don't just walk away there from that relationship. If if it's not abuse, hear me out, okay? If you are in a relationship and you've been together six months to a year or longer and you are not having an abusive situation, do not just chalk it up as we're not compatible. We don't get along. You just don't know how. Get some help, like Coach Vaughn just said, and then do all you can first because it's nothing here. I got a, I got a client that I just took on. She's been married for 22, 23 years, and she's deciding to leave. It ain't nothing in these streets. Figure out if you can make what you what you have work instead of trying to work what you don't have. Yeah, it's troublesome in these streets, man. I <laughs> I was just in the store yesterday, a day before yesterday, and I, I'm, I'm talking to a, uh, I, got, I got a little merger going on here with a, with a local, um, I don't want to call her a celebrity, but she's a big deal. And we, you know, we're just talking business and I'm, you know, exchanging a little bit of what I do. And this guy standing behind me, ear hustling. And he's like, man, um, would, would you mind helping me and my wife? Just out of the blue. I'm like, nice. hey, where you come from? Nice. White guy. Nice. You know? And, um, I'm like, yeah, you know, this is what I do. And so I exchanged it. I mean, man, before I left that store, I knew this dude's whole life story. Nice. And, and we're getting together this week. So what I'm saying is, is that more and more, it, to the point that Coach Michelle was just making, if you found someone, if you have somebody in your life that is a person of integrity, man, those are not so easy to find anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I say hold on to those and, and do your best to work that out. Um, you'd be surprised how many of these differences can be overcome. So yes. um, with that, close us out, coach. All right, y'all. We will talk to y'all later. Y'all make sure that y'all stay great and we will too. Bye. Y'all.